actually when we looked at the numbers and we looked at the numbers and had to look at them again to be sure the cost of energy the per service cost of heating this space has come down dramatically um, on the old central heating system uh, about 75 pounds per service over 100 pounds if it's really cold the most we've ever spent on the trial fittings 17 pound 50 and it averages around 12 or 13 pounds How do you go about heating buildings that are maybe hundreds of years old, that were built in a time when we just didn't really think about energy efficiency in the same way that we do today? Well, we're here at St Matthew's Church in Bristol to see this, the Herschel Halo Heater, which is a rather nifty, rather elegant, super efficient system. Welcome to the Everything Electric show. Like Everything Electric, you'll love our fun-packed Everything Electric expos around the world. Next up, we're in London and Harrogate. Remember, energy and transport professionals go for free on the first day. One of the biggest problems facing historic buildings is their energy efficiency. You've got stone walls and stone floors which are impossible to heat. Big lofty rafters where heat rises and the congregation are not sat there. And then you've got the issue of planning in which listed buildings, the guideline is making minimal interventions. And with the Church of England targeting net zero by 2030, Herschel came up with this solution which combines both lighting and infrared heating. This church has um, lighting chandeliers already and the thought process was that, well, radiant heating, it's, it's, it's radiant energy in, in the same spectrum as light, uh, just in the non-visible part of the spectrum. So why don't we start using those sorts of ideas? We know how to light a church, we're quite good at that. Um, put the source of the light above where you want it to go. Um, make the fittings the right size, the right you know, suitable, elegant for the, for the setting with radiant heating. We'd end up with a radiant heating chandelier. And the missing piece for me was, um, I'm an architect, I don't know about technology and wavelengths, um, but to take that conversation to, um, to Herschel and exploit some of the sort of cutting edge technology. So I'm sat underneath one of these Herschel Halo heaters and I can tell you, it feels lovely. I'm sort of wrapped in this lovely bubble of heat. And I can also tell you that I don't think I have ever been in a church and not taken my coat off. So this is a truly novel experience. Uh, has a wonderful kind of feel. But I think the other thing that's so compelling about this is that this is radiant heat. So it really has the effect of feeling like the sun is on your face, which is just a wonderful way to feel. I think we all have positive associations with that feeling. And then when you consider the fact that actually most churches are east facing, which means that they have a south facing roof ready to take up solar. And then when you think that there are 42,000 churches here in the UK, that is a vast amount of power that could be generated to power things like Herschel Halo heaters, electrical heating solutions, or actually even share that energy with the local community. The other thing I'll say about radiant heat is that it's so efficient, partly because it only heats the things that it needs to heat. So obviously here it's heating the congregation, fabulous. But the other areas that it doesn't need to heat, it doesn't heat. So for example, the organ, which actually doesn't really like hot temperatures, doesn't need to worry about it. It's not being heated. And then of course, individual panels can be added in various offices that also exist in this building. We've set a very ambitious target of net zero by 2030. Lots and lots of work going on in all sorts of different aspects, but you can't get away from it. To heat a big church is a big problem. Um, so this solution plays a significant part. As I said, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's achieved zero carbon, it's achieved comfort. Unexpected in this, if I'm honest, we sort of knew we were going to be doing the trial here and we'd hopefully get to the end of that and say people like the look of them, they feel comfortable, it's zero carbon, that's fantastic. But of course, it's a bit more expensive to run because it's electric and a kilowatt, of, a kilowatt hour of electric is, electricity is more expensive than a kilowatt hour of gas. We were never going to conquer that. Actually, when we looked at the numbers and we, looked at the numbers and had to look at them again to be sure. The cost of energy, the per service cost of heating this space has come down dramatically. And, and it's because you're only heating the space. You're not heating all that lofty air space. You're not heating all that tons and tons of masonry. You're not constantly fighting against the heat loss of all that energy disappearing out the stained glass windows. You're just creating this bubble of heat in the place where the people are. It's better all round because you're actually saving money every time you use it. When we came to consider how we might heat this church in a 
eco-friendly way. One of our objectives is the Church of England's zero carbon aims and targets. Um, how can we do that as a church family and, and sort this one out? You're very limited to what you can do. The DAC are quite strict about that. And so we found even the idea of putting heaters up or on walls or whatever, quite difficult in an old building or working with English heritage and church authorities. So we decided, and possibly decided, that the best way to look at this would be to maybe go for something that was uh, zonal. That's the idea of the heating that we've chosen. It's easier in a building this size to heat an area rather than the whole building. And that's where the halo came in. It looks nice, it looks good. It was relatively easy to install for us, and it blends with the building. We've come a little outside of Bristol to Herschel's factory where the halo heaters are actually made and built. And that's the really nice component of this story that everything is made pretty locally. It's using British steel, the supply chain is pretty local, so making sure that the embedded carbon can be as low as possible. Now, I am so intrigued to take a little look around and just to see how these halos really come to life. Simon came with his sketches of um concept for a chandelier, heater combining with heating and the light. I, I think we took about two weeks after Simon's visit and we cobbled together a very crude halo. Uh, it doesn't look too dissimilar to the finished products in terms of the actual construction, but um, uh, hung it up for him, came back in, and he was absolutely blown away with the, the, the feeling of the heat from it. So we knew we were on a winner then when, when um, he was pleased with that. So the next stage was to put a trial in at St Matthew's where you were this morning. As soon as they've gone in, they loved them and we put another two in, which were the final. Uh, so the first one's a prototype, that was the final product. The problem is then you need someone to make them because uh, we saw that the order book could get quite big. So we opened this brand new facility last April. Um, there's some very expensive high-tech equipment used to make the halos, but they're also lovingly hand-built as well. So we're kind of blending uh, technology in terms of precision engineering with, um, with hand building and bespoking each product. So importantly with this one we can have different grill finishes, different colours, uh, different um, symbols, anything you like and, and that's important because we're even talking to cathedrals so it's quite a high mm. level of uh, expectation that um, and these things need to match the aesthetic of the building. So this one for example is going into Italy there's 12 going there. They want it to look like stone. So we're going to make a stone finish on here. So in this machine here, they are laser cutting these, which go on top of the halo heater. And they are also able to do some really, really clever and bespoke customizations using the same laser cutter. And here are some that they made earlier. And that's the thing that makes this so cool because these halo heaters need to be so sympathetic to the environment that they're in to complement the surrounding the aesthetic perfectly. And you know, this offers them a degree of customization that I'm sure whoever first built those churches hundreds of years ago, they'd be pretty jealous. We've done quite a lot of churches, but we were putting products in that didn't quite match the aesthetic. Mm. And it was sort of a bit annoying thinking, actually, we just need to make something that looks like it's always been in the church. Or if it's a heritage building, um, it needs to look like it's part of the furniture. So that was, that was the sort of penny drop moment was, mm. this is all doable with existing technology. We just need to make it uh, appropriate so that it looks like it's part of the furniture of the building. Um, and if we've done our job correctly, someone should walk into a heritage building, not notice that these are heaters. You know, we don't, in the old days, you'd have radiators and taking up space and looking quite ugly. This needs to be beautiful and part of the aesthetic of the building. So. so clearly a major benefit of these is you know finding an, ef an effective and efficient solution for huge cavernous spaces. We do a lot of industrial so we've got big corporates looking to decarbonise by usually by 2030 so in line with the church um, if not sooner and they're taking out big old gas systems that would have heated the whole area so if you took this building traditionally you'd have, uh, you'd have tried to heat the whole space which is extremely wasteful. Um, just in terms of kilowatts used. And I hear this is British steel? Yep, from the outset we said let's try to 
uh, minimise the carbon footprint and the manufacturing process. So we run uh, renewable energy for the electricity supply. There's no gas or anything in this building. Um, the materials where possible all come from the UK, so we use British steel. Uh, in the other side of the business, where we're making uh, the uh, more domestic, but they're flat panels, the uh, insulation material comes from Wales. And it's fully recyclable. So at the end of life, I think we're something like 99%, and, and this product itself, recyclable. Also importantly, it's built to last. So there's nothing in here, there's no service requirements, but if the heating element eventually fails after the 10,000 hour service life, it's no different to changing a light bulb. So we don't have to throw the whole thing away at the end of life, it can always be um, repaired and it should be there for the next 100 years in the church. Please support our Stop Burning Stuff Patreon and help us to tackle misinformation about electric vehicles and clean energy. Infrared heating is gaining popularity and it makes total sense because it's a way to direct your heat and also to use energy super, super efficiently in a low carbon way. But maybe what's more astounding about what we've seen here today is that actually it's proving that these technologies don't just work in really high tech environments, but actually the most difficult of environments, old buildings, big buildings, buildings with very difficult planning regulations. And if they can work in those circumstances, they can work anywhere. Let us know what you think in the comments, and as ever, if you have been, thank you for watching.